Dear viewers, welcome you all to our show, Orthopedic Solution Academy, Shoulder Clinic. You all know that we uh, discuss about various type of shoulder problems. Uh, how can we diagnose that problems? And what is the latest treatment such as arthroscopy, arthroplasty, and definitely the trauma management. And we have three uh, learned academic experts with us. One of them is our honorable speaker, very enthusiastic, dynamic, and very popular arthroscopy surgeon in the subcontinent, Dr. Raji Brahman, sir. I would like to request our honorable speaker, Dr. Raji Brahman, sir, to join with us. Sir, welcome, sir. Thank you very much for joining with us. Uh, dear viewers, we have two uh, learned uh, national faculty. Uh, one of them is uh, Dr. Parvez Asan, sir, uh, from Bangladesh. I would like to request Dr. Parvez Asan, sir, to join with us. Thank you very much, sir, for joining with us. And uh, dear viewers, we have another uh, uh, pioneer shoulder surgeon of Bangladesh, that is Dr. G. M. Jahangir, sir. I would like to request our honorable Dr. G. M. Jahangir, sir, to join with us. Thank you, Dr. Tanbir. Thank you very much, sir, for joining with us. Uh, dear viewers, we all know that you are eagerly waiting uh, for our program and to uh, listen and learn from our honorable speaker so that I don't want to spend any more time. And I would like to request our honorable speaker, Dr. Raji Brahman, sir, to start his magnificent presentation. Sir, would you please share your screen, sir? Thank you, Tanvir. Thank you, uh, Jahangirda, Parvezda, for inviting me today on this very important topic decision making in shoulder instability. So, I will start with the deciding factor. What are the deciding factor? And if you see the most important deciding factor is the age, whether the patient you are dealing is of a younger age group or a older age group, profession of the patient, whether you are dealing with the patient with a sedentary lifestyle or an athletic population, bone loss, bone loss towards the humeral side and the glenoid side, both are important and you must quantify the <laughs> and soft tissue and ligament laxity. So I will go one by one. Age, why it is important? It is very important because if you see the recurrence rate, which is very common when you have a dislocation in younger age, elderly patient above 50, above 60, if the patient comes with the history of recurrent dislocation, always, always exclude the cuff pathology because sometimes the cuff pathology also presents with the shoulder instability. Profession, yes. Young patient, athletic or demanding shoulder, you should be very aggressive in treating. Sometimes in sedentary shoulder or degenerative shoulder, you can plan conservative also. Bone loss, again, bone loss is a very important factor in deciding when you are planning for your surgical option, whether you go for a soft tissue repair or a bony repair or a combined procedure. So quantify your bone loss. And always see for the ligament laxity because sometimes the hypermobile shoulder, the shoulder which has uh, uh, those shoulders who which have some amount of uh, multi-directional instability has very poor prognostic factor if you put you try to stabilize this shoulder. Let's start with the first most common. I think this is the question. I think this is a million dollar question for arthroscopy surgeon. First time dislocated. So what will you do when a patient comes to you with a single episode of dislocation? So in our, uh, when we were postgraduate resident, first time dislocator was always, always, always a conservative. this patient in first time dislocation more recurrence rate in younger population so young age professional athlete or demanding shoulder always first time dislocated you can plan for surgical option so now the 
planning has changed. We have changed our plan accordingly. So younger the age, if it is a demanding shoulder, either a professional athlete or some shoulder which needs huge abduction and external rotation activity, or sometimes the shoulder which needs some amount of uh, uh, rotational and pivoting activity in the shoulder joint, you try to treat them surgically. Older age group, non-athletic population, if presents to your clinic, if it's the first time dislocation, it's conservative is the treatment to us. So what are the criteria for young and old age? The younger age is normally between 15 to 30. That is the younger age group. 30, 35, towards 45 or 50. Try to treat them as a elderly. I think the clear cut scenario, clear cut guideline, which will guide you whether you will go for surgery or conservative treatment in a first time dislocator. If you see the surgical options, normally we have three surgical options. The pancart repair, which is a soft tissue repair. So some people try to do it open and arthroscopically. As an arthroscopy surgeon, we try to do it arthroscopically. But if you do it open also, the results are quite good. Only thing is that the scarring and sometimes the pain in, in the shoulder which is there and some amount of limitation of movement is there when you do open bank cut. Sometimes there is a bone loss, so you have to plan for a latarget. Again, latarget, open or arthroscopic. You are surgically skilled, you can plan arthroscopically, but open latarget, most of the arthroscopy surgeons are doing nowadays and it's a very easy procedure. You can do it in just 40-45 minutes. So don't don't be shy in doing an open lethargic or open bank card if you are not doing an arthroscopic surgery with or without rempicilla. This is very important. Now we are using the term bank card plus or lethargic plus. So along with the addressing the antro instability, sometimes if you have a huge defect in the posterolateral part of the humeral head, we try to put the infraspinatus in the gap and create and convert that defect which is intra-articular to extra-articular. What is empicillas? Empicillas is a French word which means filling of the defect. So normally we fill the defect with the infraspinatus. So again, you can use one anchor or two anchor depending upon the size of the defect. And it's like a bipolar stability. So in front, you are creating a bump or you are increasing the crack of the glenoid and back you are having a check ring infraspinatus which is pulling the shoulder posteriorly during abduction and external rotation which is the most common uh, uh, position of the shoulder to get dislocated. Bone loss. This is very important. Before planning for your surgery, always address the bone loss. First, glenoid bone loss, then the humeral head bone loss which is a hill sex lesion. So glenoid bone loss, normally we go for a Humeral head subtraction image, you can see here. This is a humeral head subtraction image. You can use your circle technique. You can use your diameter technique. You can use your uh, 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 superimposed technique, any of the technique to see the bone loss in the glenoid. And also see the bone loss in the humeral head and to see the hill sex defect or hill sex index. And this is very important concept, I think, by Burkhardt, the on-track and the off-track lesion. So if your glenoid bone loss or humeral bone loss is more than 20%, what happens during movement of the shoulder, normally the shoulder, what the abduction and external rotation, you will see the shoulder is coming out of the track. So these are the on, uh, off track lesion. And if during abduction uh, and uh, rotational movement, the shoulder is on the track till 90 degree of the abduction, it's an on track lesion. Why it is important? So on track lesion and off track lesion will help you in deciding whether you are planning for a isolated soft tissue repair or a bony uh, procedure like lethargy with or without rempicillage. So I will just simplify it. First thing is rule of 20%. And this is very important. So glenoid and humeral head bone loss less than 20%. Let's quantify with the bone loss only. So you have a patient with a humeral head bone loss of less than 20% and a glenoid bone loss of 20%. And these are the ideal cases for soft tissue repair. 
So plan for an arthroscopic or open bank cut repair. So in this patient, you can see here, this is a soft tissue prefs here. So we repaired it with the su three suture anchor and you create a good bump in the anterior inferior part of the glenoid and that will give good amount of glenohumeral stability. And this is very important. So first rule, rule of 20%. If the glenoid and the humeral head bone loss is less than 20%, you can plan for a soft tissue procedure which is an arthroscopic bank card or an open bank card repair. The second scenario is glenoid bone loss is less than 20%, but humeral head bone loss is more than 20%. So here only soft tissue procedure will not work. You have to add something with the soft tissue because you have a humeral head defect also. So normally when the glenoid bone defect is less than 20, we treat this patient as uh, uh, not ideal patient, uh, patient for your lethargic procedure and your humeral head bone loss is more than 20%. So you need something to cover that humeral head bone loss. So here comes the role of bank cut plus procedure. So what we do, normally you can see there's a big humeral head defect. So normally we try to cover this humeral head <coughs> with the tendinous part of the infraspinatus and that is called filling. You can see the intraarticular defect has been converted into extraarticular and it acts as a check ring in the posterior lateral part of the shoulder. And this is very important. And one important technique is that always try to go with your labral release, take your bite of the infraspinatus. Once you have repair, complete your repair of the anterior inferior part, then tie the infraspinatus tendon. Because once you tie the rempicillus, what will happen? You will see it's very difficult to work in the glenohumeral space. Here you can see we have done the bank art repair. We have taken the bite to the infraspinatus, but we have tied it in the second part of the surgery. Don't do the tightness of the infraspinatus or filling of the uh, infraspinatus in the humeral head defect before your bank art repair is completed. So, now we have a three third type of group of patient where you have a glenoid bone loss of more than 20% and humeral head bone loss of more than 20%. And here, these are the challenging cases. Multiple time dislocator, young patient, you have, they are very dynamic, they are very active. So now your soft tissue procedure will not work. Soft tissue procedure, anterior and posterior combination will also not work because you have a plate bone defect in the glenoid. So you have three options. So most important and the most, I think, widely accepted option is your latarjet procedure. So how does latarjet work? It acts as a bone block. There is a sling effect where your uh, the uh, the conjoint tendon acts over the infraspinatus as a check ring, and you have a capsular reinforcement also because normally you are at the end of the procedure trying to repair the capsular labral tissue with the CL ligament. So it acts by your three techniques, three in one technique. So you can see here this patient, you can see the humeral head defect, you can see the glenoid defect. The humeral defect was around 25%, the glenoid bone defect was around 20-25%. So these are the ideal case for latarjet procedure. So latarjet normally, I do open latarjet. And don't feel shy in doing open lethargic. Try to put your crocoid in the anto inferior part. Either you can use a congruent arc or a non congruent arc. Try to put two screws to have a good rotational stability. And try to put your crocoid graft at least one millimeter or one two millimeter away from the anterior uh, margin of the glenoid. And this is very important. You will see you are increasing the track of the glenoid so that you're, you are compensating the bone defect also. It's a bone block plus sling, plus capsular reinforcement. So three one in one procedure for letter jet. So let's conclude. So I will make it very simplified. So we have a defect in the glenoid and we have a defect in the hill sacs in a patient with a recurrent dislocation of this shoulder. So humeral head bone defect, glenoid bone defect. Group one patient, less than 20% of the glenoid fossa defect and a hill sac lesion is there. And if the patient is on track, normally you plan for a soft tissue procedure, arthroscopic repair of the bank artery. You have a glenoid fossa defect, 
where your defect is less than 20, but hill sack lesion is off track. You have a big hill sack. So arthroscopic repair of bankard both soft tissue with an MP slug. So you are putting a bump anteriorly in a checkering posterior. Group 2 patient. Group 3 patient, you have glenoid fossa defect of more than 20, but on track lesion. Here you have to plan for a lateral jet procedure. And, and this is very common in our uh, multiple time dislocator, we get that type of patient. Sometime, if you have a glenoid bone defect of more than 20 and it's an off track, you have a big hill sex also. So you have plan plan lethargic with or without ramp sludge or a humeral head bone grafting. And this is very cumbersome procedure because once you graft the humeral head to compensate for the ramp sludge, that shoulder is going to be a very, very stiff shoulder. So normally we get one, two and three type of patient. Type four patients, yes, if it's a huge humeral head defect, if the bone defect is more than 25%, then lethargic film will not work because coracoid has some limitation. Then you have to use a iliac crest bone graft. So more than 25, 30% of the bone defect, your bone block procedure will be isolated bone block. There will be no sealing effect because you are using the uh, iliac crest bone graft to cover that defect. So... Now I would like to thank because this is a very small nutshell talk on the uh, how we normally decide or make our decision for shoulder instability. So I am open for question and answer. Thank you Tanvir. Thank you Jahangirda. Thank you Parvezda. Thank you very much <clears throat> for your magnificent presentation and definitely it has a specific guideline for uh, young surgeons uh, to take decision whether you operate or not to operate and which type of operation I have to do. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for your very nice presentation. Now, I would like to request our honorable uh, national faculty to share their knowledge. I would like to request GM Jangir, sir, uh, to share his knowledge regarding the presentation. Sir, please. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rajivda. You have uh, covered all aspects of shoulder a dislocation management, both uh, open, surgical, arthroscopic, letters, all aspects. You have, in short, all covered all aspects. Thank you very much. Um, it is uh, clear to me. Um, I think it is clear everyone. You have uh, described in a clear way. Uh, it is uh, just my not a question, but my uh, exchange or my suggestion, but what will you do? Uh, so, uh, like uh, I have decided I do it uh, a bank card repair as because M MRI sometimes CT scan I see there is a small hill sack lesion but when I go uh, paraoperatively I see remove I do the paraoperative abduction and external rotation in this situation I can see this uh, hill sack lesion is type of uh, Optic lesion. In this situation, what will you do? Bankard lesion alone or with ramp lesions? What will you do? So, whenever I am in doubt, I add ramp sludge because if you see the literature, the recurrence rate is less if you add ramp sludge. So, recurrence rate is more if you don't add ramp sludge. So, this is very important. Yes, this is good. It is thank you. Uh, and also, and sometimes we find paraoperatively uh, there is some less amount of uh, soft tissue anteriorly. And, but there is also hill sack lesion. And this is the inadequate tissue for repair of the anterior bankard lesion. So what situation, what will you do in this case? Either so go for you. Letter Z or augment any other thing? Very good question, Jahangirda. If we have a uh, anterior inferior instability, patient with recurrent dislocation of the shoulder with no bone loss, so I will not plan for letter Z. Letter Z for me is for bone loss only. If it is capsular labral tissue is very pure, try to reinforce the capsular labral tissue. You will not get a labral capsular labral tissue. Sometimes you can take a bite through the subscapularis also, the inferior part of the subscapularis, tendons part of the subscapularis. And now 
there is a standard described dash procedure also where we reroute the biceps off so these are the three pancart plus procedure which you can try with a poor capsule labral uh, tissue if you have a bone defect there with a poor labral tissue always plan for your lateral jet yes yes uh, thank you sir thank you very much sir i have one little questions uh, you have mentioned in your lecture that uh, uh, you will put a bone block that is from iliac crest and sometimes uh, in lateral jet uh, so uh, and you told that there is uh, one to two millimeter away from the glenoid rim uh, but uh, when we will put that things so if we put the iliac crest bone graft uh, that will put one to two mm away from the glenoid rim or uh in case of the coracoid we are using in lateral jet uh, in that case when i will do that uh, gap 1 to 2 mm gap uh, this 1 to 2 mm gap is to prevent your impingement while your shoulder is movement having a rotational movement in the external rotation so you have to follow this both for the coracoid and your uh, when you are doing uh, iliac crest bone graft the only advantage of iliac crest bone graft is that when you are getting a very large defect more than 25 30 sometime you get a humeral defect of 40% your lateral jet is not going to work there because there is limitation with the diameter of the coracoid so then only you have to plan for your iliac crest bone graft uh, thank you very much sir uh, uh, is there any part of iliac crest uh, uh, that you uh, regularly take for bone graft which part of the iliac crest is very much uh, helpful uh, to make the same contour of the uh, glenoid sir so normally you can take the tricortical graft from the central part so that you have a good tricortical uh, purchase and you can shape it you can make it thin also according to your uh, diameter so uh, it's like 1.5 to 1.8 or come sometime 2 cm graft is good enough to cover your anterior inferior part of the glenoid my my one question yes sir please yes uh, to dr rajiv yes you have the when there is about uh, 30 to 40 percent glenoid bone loss you add iliac crest as well as coracoid not only together both together or only iliac crest so i prefer only iliac crest because iliac crest plus coracoid adding both normally it's very cumbersome procedure so double pr uh, procedure someone has described but it's very cumbersome so i take central part of the iliac crest you can cover up to 30 or 40% of bone loss in the glenoid you have a thick bone there very thick bone there yes but uh, i have uh, because uh, only iliac crest cover the uh, in case the anteroposterior translation but i mean no slender and uh, but with foot of the coracoid it also परवेश <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Professor. Do you have uh, any knowledge? Uh, uh, do you have any questions? Sorry, sir. Do you have any? Uh, do you want to share anything uh, with us, sir? Sir, you have to unmute yourself. Professor, do unmute yourself. When there is more than twenty-five percent bone loss, then it is necessary to give the bone graft. Uh, from the iliac crest so uh, especially uh, instability is more here and if you do not go for bone graft then uh, that instability still recurs so uh, we had little experience uh, regarding this in place but i have uh, as i have seen dr jahangir have done one or two cases uh, with me uh, jahangir uh, yes uh, yes uh, i had seen but it is not very easy procedure that i uh, want to say 
Uh, so I, it's, uh, I think it's very technically uh, demanding and uh, you should mm -hmm. be very cautious in putting this uh, iliac crest with a crocoid. But definitely mm -hmm. it will work better if you put, put isolated iliac crest without crocoid graft. Yes. Yes. Uh, 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 yeah, why? Uh, do you, uh, uh, we want to see the uh, video. Can you show it? Is, is it possible? Video. Yeah. Of uh, Rajiv Ramda of recent Again. yes, uh, yeah. sir. Uh, definitely, it is possible, but uh, uh, we think uh, yeah. we can show it in our next program uh, with yes, uh, another topic of this. Uh, that is the right. uh, joint joint venture of uh, Ilacrest and uh, Korakad process uh, yes, and yes. applications. Yeah, uh, sir. I, I have a very uh, tricky questions as a beginner. Uh, is there any rules of uh, using uh, three anchors or four anchors? Is there any hard, first, hard and first rules uh, in that case? Or uh, we have to take the decisions? Yeah, that depends upon your what is your type of tear. If your tear is extending from suppose 2 o'clock to 7 o'clock position, so you have to cover with four anchors. So 2, 3, 4 depends upon the uh, type of the tear. Try to put your anchor 5 to 6 millimeter <laughs> Anterior part towards the buffered complex. So, depending upon the type of the tear, your anchor depends. So normally, three anchors is good for our Asian population. Sometimes you need four also. And very uh, small so female, you can come up, uh, cover up with two anchor also. So, yes. don't uh, stick to yourself that I will use two, three, or four. See the tear and try to create a good bump. And normally, two to three anchors is good enough. If you need fourth anchor, put it there. Okay, sir. So, is it mandatory to do a uh, rasp of the uh, uh, labral wall, uh, uh, glenoidal wall there to make it draw? See, it's a your bank card you are planning for a soft tissue healing to the bone, which is a very non biological process. So, bone to bone healing, soft tissue, yeah. soft tissue healing is a very biological process. So, you are planning for a soft so you should augment with some of the procedure. So you have preparation of the glenoid, preparation of the labrum, so that your labrum is loose enough to come up and it covers the whole of the raw area. The preparation of the glenoid, now people are curating the anterior inferior margin of the glenoid also to make it more raw and whole of your labrum sits over the curated area and have a good fibrosis. So we want good fibrosis for that you need to rasp and if in some time you need to curate also the anterior inferior wall. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, we have learned many things uh, from your lectures and from your discussions. Uh, sir, yeah, if you have uh, uh, any questions, uh, then you can ask. Or otherwise, we will are uh, going to conclude our program. Yeah. Thank uh, you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, dear viewers. I uh, hope uh, 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 this discussion will help you a lot as because of uh, uh, you can make your decision first you have to make your decision then go for operations and this is very important to make your decisions and i would like to thank raj tv and malia cnt specialized hospital uh, for helping us to arranging this type of academic program and definitely i would like to thank dr raji brahman sir dr gm jangir sir and dr parvez Hassan sir for being with us and dr mahmud tanvir ashraf consultant orthopedics nitor saying bye bye to you and hope we will connect with you in the coming friday with another shoulder problem. Till then, I would like to say bye bye to all of you. Bye bye. You are watching Raj TV, Jagorone, Bangladesh. Please subscribe our channel.